By far, the most common question I get from prospective student pilots calling the flight school has to do with ground school. They want to know, do you guys offer ground school? When do you teach ground school? How much is ground school? What course do you recommend for ground school? And a lot of times students will call me and say, well, I already passed my FAA written. Do I need ground school? These are all very good questions and students need to understand that they can't learn everything they need from a book or a video course. So in this video, I'd like to explain to you why one-on-one -on -one instruction with your flight instructor is so important. First, a bit of historical context. Since the early days of civilian flight training in America in the 1950s, student pilots have traditionally gathered at their local airports to attend in-person group ground school classes. These classes were hosted by a flight or ground instructor who would lecture on various aviation topics with the goal of preparing students to pass what is now known as the FAA Airman Knowledge Test, commonly known as the written test. There are still a handful of companies that offer these in-person knowledge test prep classes. Fast forward to the mid-1980s when VCRs became household staples, allowing students to order VHS tapes produced by John and Martha King and other famous instructors. A student could sit on his sofa, pop in a VHS tape, or later a DVD, and watch Martha explain airspace in the comfort of his living room. It wasn't until the mid to late 2000s when the internet became a viable way to deliver aviation content to students, and even then, connection speeds were relatively slow. High-speed, fiber-optic internet connections and wireless devices are a relatively new phenomenon. Most students today use some sort of online product like the Sporties Learn to Fly course that we recommend. Disclaimer, I don't get any kickbacks from Sporties for saying that, I just think that they offer the best quality product on the market. Sporties advertises their Learn to Fly course as a quote, private pilot ground school course that offers quote, everything you need to prepare for your knowledge test and earn your pilot certificate with online ground school, FAA test prep, and real world training, all in one easy to use package. As much as I like this product, their description of it is a bit of a marketing stretch in my opinion. The course does not provide everything you need to earn your pilot certificate. No off the shelf product can make this claim. What many students don't realize is that they will need their flight instructor to teach them dozens of things that they just can't learn from a book or an online course. These are the things that should be included on the pre-solo knowledge test, which is required by FAR 61.87b. There are a few questions on our pre-solo knowledge test that you'd have a really hard time answering just by reading an FAA book or watching an online course. For example, what is DMMS, defined minimum maneuvering speed, for your airplane, and how should it be used? When preparing to start the engine, the checklist states prime as required. But what does this mean, and how is priming accomplished? While performing the before takeoff checklist, the engine runs rough during the magneto check. What might be causing this, and what, if anything, can you do about it? The intent of the pre-solo knowledge test is to cover information that is specific to the student's aircraft and location. For example, a student pilot flying my Cessna 172 here in Jacksonville has very different operational considerations than a student pilot who is flying that same airplane in mountainous terrain out west. There are dozens of other little nuggets of wisdom that students need to be taught so they can function here at Craig Airport, like how to use the self-serve fuel pump and the fact that the locals call it Durkeyville. You won't find that in any FAA book, manual, or off-the-shelf ground school course. Today is a great day for ground school. You know why? Because the beacon is blinking. You know why? Because it's IFR, in case you hadn't figured that out already. Days like today are perfect for a classroom session because honestly, when it's sunny and beautiful outside, wouldn't you rather be flying? There's ground school going on right now, in there. So hopefully by now you agree that at least some ground instruction is necessary during a flight training program, but is it required by the FAA? According to FAR 61105, a person who is applying for a private pilot certificate must receive and log ground training from an authorized instructor or complete a home study course to prepare for the FAA private pilot airplane knowledge test. So if you complete the Sporties Learn to Fly course and get the certificate that says you passed, technically you don't need to log any ground instruction to satisfy this particular regulation. 
However, FAR 61-189 Flight Instructor Records states that a flight instructor must sign the logbook of each person to whom that instructor has given flight training or ground training. This is frequently overlooked by both students and instructors. At Holiday Aviation, our instructors get paid for flight and ground instruction. Customers are billed for the entire two and a half hour lesson block and are encouraged to maximize their use of this time by asking good questions and taking good notes. There are lots of things that bug me about the flight training industry, including instructors who are unwilling to provide ground instruction because all they want is flight time. In their defense, some flight schools don't pay instructors for ground instruction, which is bad for both the instructor and for the student. At Holiday Aviation, we treat our instructors like professionals because they've earned it. We also respect our customers and know that their time is valuable. Our policy is that if we can't fly because of weather, we will have a classroom lesson instead. If the student chooses to cancel a lesson within 24 hours because of a weather forecast, they will have to pay for the instructor's time if we are unable to rebook the lesson with another student. Professionals who are paid by the hour in other industries have similar cancellation policies. Our instructors value ground time with students because the learning that occurs on the ground makes the flight much more productive and enjoyable both for the instructor and for the student. There's an old saying that the airplane is a horrible classroom because it can be difficult for the student to focus on what the instructor is saying with a million other things going on in the cockpit of an airplane in flight. It's also a terrible environment for the instructor to try to teach because his first priority is the student's safety, what with scanning for traffic, minding the engine instruments, and monitoring the student's flight control inputs. So if you're a flight student and your instructor doesn't seem interested in teaching you anything on the ground, crank up your radar and start looking for another instructor or another flight school. Remember that you are the customer. With that said, you also have to remember that you are the student and you are responsible for your own learning. Flight training is expensive, so for the love of lift, please take notes during ground sessions. I can't tell you how many times I've had to remind students to take notes, which boggles my mind. It pains me to have to spoon feed students information that they could have studied on their own for free. Finally, some friendly advice for you new flight instructors out there. I know it's been, what, like three or four weeks since your private pilot check ride, but try to remember what it was like to be in your student's shoes. Try to remember what it was like to try to figure out how the magnetos work, or how lift is produced, or what to say when you push that little red button on the yoke. Try to have some grace and compassion for your students. Be humble enough to admit when you don't know what the answer is to a question, and make the effort to find the answer, even if that means spending a few extra minutes of your own time. Be a good mentor and strive to make aviation safety your number one priority. You might not want to be a career flight instructor like me, but at least while you're there in the right seat of that little airplane, try your best. Do the right thing and make your instructor and your examiners proud. Remember that your first student might be your first officer one day. Earn his respect now and it will pay dividends later.